What is up, everybody? So we're in the middle of October, the first week or so of October, and I've been so excited to watch horror movies, and I get myself really pumped up to watch new horror films, and I've actually been kind of disappointed in a lot of the streaming services like Netflix and Hulu and even Prime Video. They have somewhat of a selection, but as far as like bringing on new material, I'm wondering if they're going to wait until later in the month to push more forward, because I haven't really been that impressed with the things that I've seen on there so far. But if there's one streaming service that doesn't let me down, it is Shudder. Shudder consistently year round has amazing selection of horror films, but in October, they really amp up their game and they put so much incredible material out for people to watch. And the movie I'm gonna be talking about today is a childhood favorite of mine. I had not seen this movie in probably over 15 years. It's been a really long time since I've watched this. And when I was younger, I just absolutely adored this film. I thought there was something so magical about it. And from re-watching it this time around, I have a feeling that it has to do with the atmosphere, the storytelling, and the film I'm going to be talking about today is Lady in White. Lady in White is directed by Frank Lelogia. The year is 1962. The place is Willow Point Falls. Nobody talks about what happened in the school cloakroom 10 years ago. Locked in a school closet during 1962 Halloween, young Frank witnesses the ghost of a young girl and the man who murdered her years ago. Shortly afterward, he finds himself stalked by the killer and is soon drawn to an old house where a mysterious lady in white lives. He discovers secrets of the woman. He soon finds that the killer may be someone close to him. So this film has a really unique and interesting premise. And when I looked at Frank's filmography, he only did a couple of films. And I see that the reviews for this movie are incredibly polarizing. And the first thing I want to say about this movie is any complaint that a person can have about this movie is completely valid, whether that be the cheesy acting, things are kind of all over the place. Like, there's a lot of things in this movie that can be tightened up. I 100% understand anyone who would have qualms about that. But what I will say about this movie is it's clearly a passion project made by someone who really wanted to put this on screen and it is incredibly immersive. This film bleeds atmosphere. If you're looking for a movie that just feels like Halloween and feels like fall, this is 100% the movie you need to watch. There is a time jump in the film that takes us to winter time later on, which kind of takes you out of that feeling, but that initial feeling you want of spooky season and Halloween, especially in the early 60s, which I feel like isn't something that you see very often. But the film tells the story of Frank, who we see really early on in the movie, as an adult, he's an established author, and he's going back to his hometown, and he's driving in a taxi, and he tells the taxi driver, hey, can you pull over here and stop? And he goes to this grave site, and um, the taxi driver makes some comment to him, and he says, oh, this something happened a long time ago. And so it jumps back in time to when he's nine years old, and you get introduced to his family. He lives with his dad. His mother has died, and his dad lives with his parents. And his grandmother and grandfather are super eccentric characters. His brother is kind of like a bully towards him, but also seemingly loves him. It's one of those really interesting dynamics where you can kind of, if you've had siblings, you can just sort of feel that realism behind that. And they're kind of back and forth with each other when he goes to school he reads this like short story that he made he's clearly like into horror he's super like out there compared to all the other kids in his class one day after school's over he ends up getting locked in the closet by these two kids he goes to school with who if it tells you how awful they are like say the n-word multiple times through the movie early 1960s this film has a really heavy commentary on racism which I was really surprised by actually it was something I didn't remember when I was a kid obviously you know when you're a young six seven year old kid watching a movie for the first time the racial undertones aren't the first thing you pull out but I was really impressed with how they were introduced in the film and it's not perfect but I think it's enough to where it's engaged and so he goes in there the only person left in the school is a janitor he's an African-American man and he gets locked in this closet and he sees this girl kind of float through the door and he sees her get killed but you don't see who the murderer is and someone ends up coming through the door and he doesn't see Frank in there he goes down pulls something out of like a grate in the floor and ends up leaving and the rest of the film is Frank is trying to figure out who this is, who murdered this young girl, who was this young girl, why did this happen and the janitor ends up getting blamed 
for the murder and ends up getting put in jail and tried for murder. And this film has a really heavy commentary on racism in the 1960s. You really see this heavy theme of like, he was just a janitor at a school. He got drunk one night while he was on the job, which he shouldn't have done, but he ends up getting drunk and because he was intoxicated, they blame him for this. It does a good job of painting all the accusations against him as really silly and stupid and that people are just solely doing it because he's one of the few black people that live in the town. And you really get that and you can tell it's probably the experience that Frank had when he was growing up seeing black people in his community and how they were treated. And it, it does a decent job juggling it. There is some of the stuff that comes off a little corny, but there's a lot of dialogue in this film that comes across as corny. I don't think all the actors in it are super fantastic, but there is this charm to it. The movie really just kind of bleeds this charm that I don't feel like you get in every other film. This movie has an amazing score that really just kind of elevates it, and it really feels similarly to like a Goonies or a Lost Boys or that type of film where it's like not too much about like nostalgia glasses but much more of just kind of putting you in this comfortable atmosphere to where I feel like you know teenagers to older adults could get into this world and it's not super scary it's more just suspenseful it's like a you're spending the movie trying to put together in your head they introduce you to all these characters in the town and you're trying to figure out who could this killer possibly be and then this idea of the lady in white is introduced and like she's this mystical character that uh, stories of her go around the town and the way that that kind of gets interlaid into the rest of the story is interesting and what I find so fascinating about this film is there's some really great shots in the movie the cinematography looks nice and there's also some really corny visual effects that I really appreciated and I don't know watching this movie it's a little under a two hour runtime. I was just immersed throughout the entire experience and it really brought me back to when I was a kid and I know I guarantee I'm a little biased because I loved this movie when I was younger. Uh, there is a lot of problems with it. The screenplay is not perfect. But this is a movie I'm going to continue to add into my rotation because I just think it's wonderful. And if you've never seen it, go in and watch it. Just make an opinion for yourself. And Shudder's got it streaming right now, which is really fortunate because, you know, it's not really the most talked about movie when it comes to horror films. And it's super fantastic. And it's a lot of fun. And I think you'll enjoy it if you check it out. So if you've seen Lady in White, did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was wonderful. It made me laugh. It made me smile. It was just a great time. And I'm really glad that I watched it. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.